there for the opposition. I think that they are. It's well known. Murdoch is a Clinton supporter. I think it's established. It's open. He's come out of the closet on that one. He supports Hillary Clinton. So why is it, why is he ashamed to give an infomercial on his own network saying I'm Rupert Murdoch, I support Hillary Clinton, and I approve of this message, and then get Roger Ailes to wallow out and say I am R Roger Ailes, I'm the I'm the kingmaker behind the scenes, and I support Hillary Clinton and open borders, and I fooled all of you rubes for all of these years. Now have a nice day, and I approve of this message. Logically, I don't think it's something they could do directly because it doesn't make any sense. It has to be done in a surreptitious way. That's my opinion. You know, you know they've gone after me behind the scenes. You know that. They've done yeah. things that I can't even disclose to me that you'll never believe, that I can't even talk about. They own a lot of entities. They own magazines. They own publishing companies. And you know that, ironically, they own Harper Collins, who published uh, several of my books a few years ago and did very well with them. I don't even think they know that they made money with me. And yet, even though HarperCollins, which is an imprint of News Corporation, made a lot of money with my book, I was still banned from their television network. Think about the, the idiocy of that one. All right, look, I don't want to talk about that uh, ad infinitum. Okay, what do we have now? WABC, thank goodness. Stephen, what's on your mind? Thank you uh, very much, Michael. The, the uh, reason that... Uh uh, the, the Jewish groups may not be complaining uh, about the behavior of Islamic groups is that there may be sort of an analogous thin blue line or an understanding between orthodox thinkers. And I'm wondering what you think about that. Uh, you know, an alliance. Oh, yeah, they, they're, in the, they're in that group, the orthodox groups, so we won't complain about them. They won't complain about us. Uh, you know, what do you think about that? I don't think it goes that far personally. I, I, I know what you're implying, but I don't think it's a valid uh, implication at all because there are despicable things done by orthodox religious people in all religions. There's no question about that. And I have criticized some of those practices on this show. I, did hold, I held nothing back when I talked about the barbaric practice of orthodox, some orthodox Jewish sects which perform circumcision by permitting some psycho to bite the uh, foreskin off the baby. You know that's, that's a fact, don't you? Right, the breast. Yeah, the breast. Okay, listen to me. Listen. That's, the sick, that's the sickest thing I've ever heard of on, in my life. And I was so roundly attacked by Orthodox Jewish groups for that. And others said, no, you're right. Modern Orthodox don't do that because you're transmitting viruses by doing it. It's sick. It goes back to ancient times. They're sick for doing it. And they oh, it's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. It doesn't say do it with your mouth. Some sicko did it a thousand years ago, and they said, oh, that's tradition. There's a lot of traditions that are stupid and sick. What, because it's a tradition to rape uh, uh, the, the prisoners of another tribe? That should be in your, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your lexicon of things that you do? Of course not. I'm still on line with you. I'm sorry, what? Okay, good. Uh, that, yes, well, it's akin to, uh, you know... What were you talking to? Wait a minute, I just heard you talking to someone else about going online with you. What was that about? I asked you if I'm, I'm still in this phone call. Or oh, if, oh, oh, it's hard to tell, I know, in radio. People don't know. So, uh, okay, I, I, I think I answered the question. The answer is no, I don't think there's any spillover between Orthodox Jewish people and ISIS in any way, shape, or form. However, I will say this, and it's a very dangerous thing to say as well, but I'm a free thinker. I read the Old Testament, and many of the barbaric insanity that you see ISIS acting out can be found in this book. Do you know that? Listen, it's... Uh, do, you, do you understand that if you read Leviticus, much of what the psychos in ISIS are doing, you can find in the Old Testament. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I'm aware that hypnotic, it's hypnosis, orthodox thinking is hypnosis from, uh, they start with the people being toddlers, and they inculcate... Right, well, I don't want to bash orthodox, I, it, that's not what I'm saying. Where do you think the radical Muslims derived their Quran from in large part? I mean, you've got to be a fool and to not understand that the Jewish religion... Of the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and, 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 and Islam, the Jewish religion was first, Christianity was second, and the Muslim religion, Islamic religion, 
was third. And much of what is in the Islamic holy books is derived directly from the five books of Moses. And all you've got to do is read um, any of it to understand this. If you want to talk about it, I don't think people care. <clears throat> if you read Leviticus, which I've studied repeatedly for 40 years, much of what is in there is in the Muslim holy books. Some of it makes sense, but some of it doesn't. Uh, the Jewish people have dropped the prohibitions against certain behaviors, or they don't kill lepers, they don't kill adulterers, they don't kill adulteresses, rather. But apparently in the more primitive regions of the Islamic world, they still follow the proscribed, uh, shall I say, punishments that are laid out in Leviticus, which I've read repeatedly. And so it, it comes down to uh, you know, no divination, no tattoos. What do you think the Muslims in those countries would do with someone who has tattoos on them? And I, they'd probably kill them, right? They would say that they're uh, devils, like the Yazidis they call. And it's a shame that they haven't gone through a, uh, a reformation. They are the purists in their mind. They haven't even progressed beyond the origins of their own holy book. And so you have to read it for yourself to understand the threat that mainstream, middle-class Muslims are facing from their own religion. Well, that hits us up against the golden calf of talk radio, which is the hard break. It is great to be against the war after you vote for the war. It is great to be for gay rights after you insult the entire gay community by supporting DOMA. That's what we need. A college demagogue commie. You know, I'm looking at Sanders. You know how much I love him. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was watching an ad on TV just now. Do you know he's a dead ringer for who? Bernie Sanders is a dead ringer for the guy who runs eHarmony. They could be cousin, like a doppelganger. And so I'm thinking that after he's forgotten Bernie, he can run a dating site for uh, communists. He can call it eCommy. I think it would be a big thing for all those people who love him. Then I see an article, New York area ports shut down as longshoremen walk off job. And I said to myself, where are the short shoremen? Does Rand Paul know where they might be? Where are the short shoremen these days? We all know what a longshoreman is, but where are the short shoremen? Maybe they're in a pygmy area of uh, an island yet to be discovered. They'd be called short shoremen. I'm just joking around here. How much can you take of this? This is when it's going to comment. The other thing. Yes, someone's going to comment. That's going to comment. I can't wait already. To the end of the day, to hear who's going to say what. Bill O'Reilly's going to comment on the comments of the comments that were made about the comments, about his comments about the comments. Stay tuned. How much can you take? Is there no saturation level for listening to commentary about commentary? There must be a saturation point at which you'll finally stop uh, commenting on commenting on comments. Well, I, apparently not. Today, it's all you want to do is comment on. You don't care about the Zika virus. You don't care about diseases without borders. You don't care that your government is covering up the disease. You don't care about anything other than comments on the comments on the comments. So in the next hour, I will comment on all of the comments that I've made in the last two hours right here on the comment show of comment shows, the Savage Commentary. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome uh, to Dr. Savage's version of Dr. Zhivago. 
Now, the reason I'm playing the, play it again, because they don't know what I'm talking about, is Trump Cruz. It's Trump. It's Cruz. It's Trump. It's Cruz. It's Megyn Kelly. Trump Cruz. I want to talk about what's at stake in this election. So play Dr. Zhivago, please, on the Savage Nation. For all of you Russian speakers who have fled the Soviet Union and have made new lives for yourself in America, what I'm about to say is very familiar to you, but for the average American dunce, they don't know what I'm talking about generally, even if they agree with me. They don't know why they agree with me, but their instincts are correct. What is at stake in this election is nothing less and nothing more than what happens on one level or another in the novel Dr. Zhivago, written by Boris Pasternak, and it was first published in 1957 in Italy. The film came out many years later, in 1965, and it was the most popular film of its time. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing the theme from Dr. Zhivago. Why is it of any importance to you? Because it was a time when the communist bloc was behind the Iron Curtain. It was a very powerful bloc. People were living in slavery. And this book tells the story of one doctor through many phases of Russian history that begins in Imperial Russia in 1903. And, and it leads you through what happens to this single man and a love affair with Lara, played by Julie Christie, during the Bolshevik or Communist Revolution. And what you see after the October Revolution and the Russian Civil War, what the communists do to middle-class families, almost exactly what Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Bernie Sanders have done, would do, would do, or will do if they're allowed to get away with it. And that is take away the property of the middle class. And there's nothing more telling in that movie than when I first saw it was their beautiful estate that they live in it occupied after the Russian Revolution by a group of rabble. They take the owners of the estate and put them in the basement of their own estate house and they put rabble from the gutters into their estate who now live in the, in, in the bedrooms, etc. This is very much what Obama's dream is. It's the mad, mad dream of Barack Obama that the middle class should be broken and brought down. I don't mean this literally, but I mean it in a certain way that's exactly what he's been doing. In essence, he's putting the same kind of rabble into America and eventually he'll put them into your house. America is our home. Obama has destroyed our home by flooding America with third worlders who don't belong here to begin with. They don't come here to work. Many of them come here to live off the fat of the land. And unfortunately, many of them come here diseased, as you well know. But again, going back to the main theme of Dr. Zhivago, it's the effect of communism on one man, one doctor, uh, Yuri, who is the protagonist. And as he flees... Moscow with his family by train to Tanya's family form, family's former estate called Varikino, located in the Ural Mountains. You see some of the most beautiful scenery. I don't even know where they filmed this uh, this movie. And you see the, the the decrepit house, and you see how it is, and also you see the evil nature of the revolutionaries in this movie. It's really worth watching with your kids and try to explain to them that that's what would happen in this country if Bernie Sanders were to win uh, on one level or another. That's exactly who Bernie Sanders is. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are fundamentally the Bolsheviks that all of you should, sh should fear very deeply. And that's why I was playing the theme, which we'll play again on the Savage Nation. That, that opens up, us up for some calls. Went over everyone's head, they're ready listening. They moved over ready to Fox News. One day, well, I want to say this about that. No, I think Cruz is, no, no, you're wrong about, oh, no, Bob, I'm sorry. No, 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 it wasn't, it, it was, it was uh, Mishnik. It was Mishnik. No, what Trump did with Mishnik. And the fact is that Mishnikov and, and Trump, well, when you analyze the thing, it's certainly true that uh, Trump is the new Hitler because Mishnikov certainly wouldn't approve of it. Does anyone know what I just said? Does anyone have any idea about the literary reference? No. That's the problem with radio today. You have to stick to the basic. You have to stick to the roast beef, gravy, potatoes, and peas. If you dare put any health food on the menu, immediately the audience rejects the menu. They turn it right off. I'm not criticizing you directly, just indirectly. I'm criticizing my audience just slightly indirectly for not wanting to hear anything except Trump and Cruz and Cruz and Trump and Trump and Trump. Anyway, take your kids to the living room movie tonight and rent Dr. Zhivago 
from 1965. Omar Sharif plays the uh, young doctor, and he falls in love with beautiful Lara Gishar, Julie Christie. It's a beautiful movie. I mean, 